So welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do a Man Whitney U test on version 29 of SPSS. Uh, we'll also take a look at how to interpret the results and how to report them and um, potentially how to make a graph as well. So we're going to use the Man Whitney U test when we have an independent categorical variable and when we have an ordinal or continuous dependent variable. So here is my data file. So let's pretend that we are looking at uh, two different types of treatments. Let's just call that treatment, shall we? And we've got treatment one and we've got treatment two. And these scores here represent some sort of symptom. So they are symptom severity scores. So let's take a look at how to enter these data into SPSS. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the bottom of the screen where this tab is and click this variable view button. I'll then go into this top left cell, so the top cell in the name column, and we can give a name to the independent variable. So let's call that treatment. And then we can give a name to the dependent variable. So let's call that symptom severity. And we have to use an underscore here because SPSS won't allow you to use a space. So symptom underscore severity. And then we can use um, this measures column to indicate that the independent variable is a nominal variable, which is another name for a categorical variable. And we can use the measures column again to specify that this is a scale variable, which is another word for continuous. But as I mentioned before, you can actually do a man when you test with ordinal uh, data. Next, we're going to go to this values column and we're going to click on this cell that corresponds to the independent variable, which brings up this little gray box. If we click on that, we can use this value labels dialog box to indicate what the levels of the independent, independent variable are. So we'll click on this plus button and we'll just use the number one to represent one of the levels of the independent variable. So let's call this treatment one. And we'll click plus again, we'll hit two, and we'll call this treatment two. And then we'll go to okay. And then if we go down to the bottom of the screen again and click uh, this time data view, we can see that these variable names appear at the top of these two columns. Um, and then we can just go to our data file and copy and paste. So I'm going to select all of the data. I'm going to hit Command C because I'm using a Mac. I think it's Control C if you're on a PC. And then I'll select the top left cell in the SPSS file and hit Command V to paste that data in. You can see that where I had numbers in the treatment column in the Excel file, one and two. I have a name in the SPSS file. That's because we allocated a name to the numbers one and two uh, a minute ago. And because I have value labels selected in this view menu here, if I take this, I just see numbers. So I'm going to keep this selected. So now we're ready to run the test. We can go to Analyze, then down to Non-Parametric Tests, then across to Legacy Dialogues, and then across to Two Independent Samples. I'm then going to transfer my independent variable to the Grouping Variable box and Symptom Severity, which is my dependent variable, to the Test Variable list. We can see that we already have Man Whitney U uh, selected here, so there's nothing to change. And then we just need to click on the independent variable to highlight it and then click Define Groups. And then we're just going to use the numbers that we used before to refer to the groups. So one, it's going to go there, two, it's going to go there. Hit Continue. And now we can click OK. So if we take a look at this test statistics table, and if we take a look at the asymp sig two-tailed part of it, we can see that we have a p-value 
of less than 0 0.001, which indicates that there was a significant effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. So in this case, there was an, a significant effect of treatment on symptom severity. Something that SPSS doesn't provide us with is appropriate uh, is appropriate descriptive statistics. So we actually have to request these separately. So what we can do is go to Analyze, down to Compare Means and Proportions, then select Means. And then we can transfer our independent variable to the independent list, our dependent variable to the dependent list. And then if we click Options, we can remove these here. So the mean is more often used when you're running parametric tests. So instead of the mean, so I've just transferred all of those over using this arrow, I'm going to use the median, which is more often reported when you are completing non-parametric tests. So I'll just use the arrow to transfer that over and then click continue and then OK. And then we can see that these median scores for the two treatment conditions have been added to the outputs. So we can see that uh, we have a median of 7 for symptom severity in the treatment 1 condition and a median of 4.5 in the treatment 2 condition. Um, so treatment 2 seems to be more effective uh, than treatment 1, assuming symptoms are negative. Um, so let's take a look at how to report these results. So we have an example here of how to report these results. Um, so we've just said a man when you test revealed that symptom severity scores were significantly lower in the treatment group compared to the placebo group. So in that part of the sentence, I've included the median and the number of participants within each treatment condition. So here we have treatment one is seven, and we can see from this ranks table, treatment one, we have 10. And similarly for um, the treatment two condition, we have 4.5, which is written here, median equals 4.5. And again, we have 10 participants in that condition. The next thing I've reported is this U value. So we've said the U equals 2.00. And that comes from this test statistics table. So man, Whitney, U, 2.00. The next thing I've reported is the Z value. So Z equals minus 3.70. So I'm looking at the same table and I've just taken this value here in the Z row and rounded that to two decimal places. And then we've got the P value. P equals less than 0 0.001. And that comes from this asymp sig two-tailed row within the same table. Finally, I've reported an effect size. So I've reported an R value. So I've said R equals 0.83. And that value actually isn't generated by SPSS. So you have to calculate this manually. And to do that, you take your Z value and you divide it by the square root of the number of participants you have. And that, in this case, provides me with a value of 0.83. So you can actually uh, get Google uh, to calculate this for you. If you'd like to insert your own statistics, you can just use this, uh, this formula here. So if we just open up Google, you can see that it calculates it for you. So that's essentially how you report the results of the man went u test. But let's also take a quick look at how to create a graph in case you're interested in knowing how to present these uh, results visually. So to do this, we can go to Analyze. Actually, no, we can go to Graphs, and then we can go down to Chart Builder. We can just, we can just click OK here to ignore this message. I'm going to go to this menu here. I can see the bar is selected. I can either drag this simple bar option up into this window or I can just double click it and that changes what appears here. I'm then going to transfer my independent variable to the x-axis and my dependent variable to the y-axis. And I think that's probably all we need to do. So then we can just um, go to OK. 
and that's going to create this graph for us. We probably want to change some things about this graph before including it in a report. Uh, so to do that, we can just double click on it. That opens this chart editor. And then if we double click on the bars, this that opens this properties window. And then we can do things like change the width of the bar. So if I go to this bar options tab, I can move this thing here to change the width of the bar. So I've moved it to the left. I'll click apply. And now they look much thinner and much better. And then there are, there are more options up here. So if I click this left one, this left button, we get to this fill and border tab. And then we can use that to change the color. So I've selected a gray. I'll click apply. And then we can probably just delete some things from this graph because we can just create, for example, a title within the Word document of our report. So we don't actually need a title within uh, the figure itself. So if you just click on anything and then click backspace or delete, that will just remove it. Um, if you click on something once and then again, you can edit what it says. So I will remove mean and let's remove the underscore. And similarly, if you click on something and you'd like to change the font style or the font size, you can do that with the properties menu. So let's try to use the same font that we used in the reports for the figure. So I'm going to select Times New Roman and because that information looks very small at the moment and would be hard to read, I'm going to select a larger font size and then click apply. And any changes you make uh, to this graph will be saved automatically. So you can just click this red button when you're finished making the changes you would like. That'll close it and those changes to the graph have been saved in this output file. So that's essentially it for the man Whitney U-Test on version 9, version 29 of SPSS. Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, let me know and I will try to get back to you. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next time.